Comic Jutsu, JT McRoberts here, and I'm going to walk you through this week's edition of What Comics Did You Buy Last Week? Wherein we talk about the comics that we bought off the actual shelves of our local comic shop or our local used bookstore or secondhand store or even gaming shop, if you will in addition to the ones that we purchased in the secondary market online. And you know where those places are, so we won't belabor the point too much. This is Comic Jutsu. Let's take a look at what comics we bought last week. Miracle Man Zero, with a nice Alan Davis cover. Actually, I didn't look to see who the artist was, or whether or not it's signed. Alan Davis, one of the original artists, unless it's, um, yeah, they've got to have it on here somewhere. That was like the Mark Buckingham penciled work that they did under Neil Gaiman, though perhaps it is all new artwork. I haven't had time to read through this just yet. But I'm a big Miracle Man fan. I was despondent for years when uh, the rights were tied up in that dispute between Neil Gaiman and Todd McFarlane. Actually, I, I was always on Neil's side, to be honest with you, but that's neither here nor there. I picked up the latest, though that may have changed by now, issue of Dark Crisis on Infinite Earths. For whatever reason, I'm a sucker for DC's crisis stuff I usually at least pick up those mini series issues and sometimes the crossover issues if they're actually something good and something worth picking up um, at a different shop I picked up Superman World War War World Apocalypse try to say that three times fast the epic conclusion to the War World saga number one you know, somebody online was complaining that they that they even numbered this one instead of just calling it War World Apocalypse. But you know, and I know in the comics that uh, things have a tendency to happen again and again, whether it's the <laughs> the supposedly ultimate issue or the, the only one or uh, one of many. They usually turn out to uh, multiply in one way or another. And also, uh, I found some stuff in the dollar box at the local secondhand store got a street angel free comic book day issue street angels dog i have the full collection so i'm not sure if this shows up in that trade paperback or not another good dollar issue fine dollar box find the commandy challenge the adventures of the last boy on earth can you solve it before they do Use the old classic DC logo. Nice little homage to creator Jack Kirby there on the cover. Another dollar box find. The Micronauts, number two of their relaunch with Image. I have a good selection of the early, the classic Micronauts. Mostly the original series and then a few issues here and there of the Micronauts New Voyage, which was the second series. This is the first of the modern reboots that I've had a chance to pick up, though. But I've been looking for them for a while. Not too hardcore, mind you. Another dollar box find here. Prodigy number six. This is a Mark Miller that we call him Malar down here in the South. But anyway. Um, interesting series. I've got a couple issues of it. I'd like to read more of it. So I figure for a dollar box find, hey, it's the way to go. Now here are some that I, I won in a lot off eBay. Well, actually, this was a solo auction for uh, Marvel 2-in-1 number 54 here. Because it features the second or third appearance of Deathlock. Um, it might be the third appearance. But I had been trying to get it for a few years because 
it's the beginning of this saga of Project Pegasus, which to me is was just a really cool storyline. I mean, I thought it was a lot of fun. And for the past year, the price on this has been going up because of the She-Hulk story, because this also features the first appearance of Titania and Screaming Mimi and some of those other, uh, whatever the name of that crazy female super wrestler group is called. But anyway, you can see... Uh, Titania there on the cover. Also, Marvel Boy, a.k.a. Quasar, running around in the background. This is a really awesome issue. Actually, I had to read this as soon as I got it. The artwork is, is John Byrne, which is pretty sweet. But anyway, don't want to do a full review on that. We'll just keep things moving along. That though That would be a really good... Uh, issue to crack open because Deathlock puts it on the thing. That was pretty uh pretty impressive. I managed to win it for a steal. Nobody else even bid on it. I don't know, it was just one of those weird middle of the night um auctions that ended and rather than get out bid, I actually won it for a really low price. I think now that the She Hulk series is out, a lot of those people that were speculating on the uh the bump in price for those have have stopped doing so but anyway i wish this was the original this is actually a pretty expensive one to find and even the reprint will cost you a few bucks and uh, i went with one of the facsimile versions tomb of dracula number 10 full color reprint first appearance of blade i have the complete essentials of the tomb of dracula which is just really a brilliant way to uh, enjoy and read that series because it's all the black and white reprints and uh i have some scattered a smattering of the full color issues um in various states of disrepair i mean a lot of them are just readers copies but i found them in like dollar boxes and three dollar boxes and things like that over the years the defenders i love the the whole brotherhood of evil mutants i mean i guess again because it's an old amazing spider-man exposure because uh, magneto's uh held in 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 the prison in one of those issues that one of those episodes rather i believe it's the one entitled the prison plot and uh he he wants to uh he winds up holding the entire prison hostage because he wants his minions freed his brotherhood of evil mutants and you see like the toad and mastermind and the blob and I just love those those guys as villains, and they're great foils for the X-Men, but I love it when they pop up in other weird places, like here battling the Defenders. And then the second part, the conclusion to that. Again, these were just stories that I'd wanted for a long, long time, and I wound up just finding some decent uh, Buy It Now auctions to get those. Same with this. This is close to a reader copy. It's got a little tear here across the front. But I thought, eh, you know, I'd rather get it for a low price than pay, yeah, you know, premium prices for the issue. I mean, it, it's not anything that I have any particular sentimental attachment to. But I've been filling in this run. I wanted to, to go back and revisit the old, uh, the first Hobgoblin run, who was really one of my favorite villains because he was, he had just, that, that storyline had just, started when I, I i kind of got into comics even though i wasn't reading it immediately you know it was probably a year after it was printed before i got to read it but i was reading other comics at the time and i i went over and uh read them at my buddy's house who had them all and he he was actually responsible for giving me like a stack of uncanny x-men books and just a variety of other other uh titles but he didn't want to come away with those Amazing Spider. He didn't want to let those Amazing Spider-Mans go. You know, he held on to those himself. So anyway, so there there are the comics that I, I got this this past week. In addition to a nice little... For people that are interested in the how-to of making comics, I picked up the Hellboy Artisan Edition, which uh, features the majority, if not all, of Hellboy in Hell and other stories, which is really 
just fantastic to look through and see the technique and get an idea of what uh, what tools that he used. Like a lot of the the coloring seems to be magic marker, or you can see where it's uh, starting to degrade in some points. So it just seems like pen and marker. But anyway, I believe there are some great breakdowns on the artist edition of this Hellboy already. Uh, buying the artist edition is a little bit rich for my blood, although there are a few that I would consider, like the Jim Starlin Cosmic Edition. And I saw the uh, John Romita's Spider-Man out in the wild, but somebody had like literally just put a down payment on it at the store, <laughs> like right before I came in. Otherwise, I was about to buy it off the shelf because it was still the original price. But anyway, there you have it. And those are the comics that I bought last week. And I look forward to reading them. And maybe we'll come back and talk about one or two of them right here on Comic Jutsu. Thanks for watching. Uh, give this the thumbs up. Hit the bell. Subscribe. Tell your friends. Tell your brother. Tell your sister. Tell your grandmother. Whoever you need to. Spread the word of Comic Jutsu. Bring them down here. Thanks for watching. Mate!